I'm Jason Miles at Johnson Space Center. We now know the crew of Artemis 2. I got a chance to talk one on one with the pilot. Hi, I'm NASA astronaut Victor Glover and I am the pilot for the Artemis 2 mission with Reed and Christina and Jeremy. You will be basically driving this ship. <laughs> it sounds daunting to me. Well, that's what we do. This is our profession, though. You know, I mean, Artemis II is not the beginning of our astronaut journey. It's a continuation. It's a continuation of, of a lot of things, uh, but it's a continuation of the training that all of us have been doing for at least 10 years. Christina and I have been in the office 10 years, and Reed and Jeremy have been there since 2009, and, and we train on things like this uh, all the time. Do you ever have any qualms whatsoever about journeying into space? No, never. I love this. It's an opportunity that is just so unique. I really believe no one deserves it. So having this opportunity, to me, it's really special. And it motivates me to just do my best because I, I, it is such a unique privilege. You know? So it, for me, it's not, it's not a qualm about it. I, I take it as a, as a charge to do my best. Never any fear? No. But that's, listen, well, I, I think I need to settle down on this. It is not a machismo. That is not my ego speaking. We train very hard. We work with a really competent team that is all over the planet, and we have a lot of trust. A high trust, high tempo team. And so those folks, when they're ready, we'll be ready. And that's a big part of it is the trust that we've built in, in the systems, but most importantly, the people that we work with. Christine, Christine is getting attention for being the first woman on a moon mission. Yeah. You're the first person of color. Yeah. Does that mean anything to you? And what do you hope it might mean to youngsters out there, maybe? Yeah. You know, a big part of my story to getting to this point was seeing a naval officer in the reserves who looked like me. After turning down the military several times, because I didn't think I had a place there, when one of my mentors came to work in his uniform, a professor at Cal Poly, Professor Wallace, he came to work in his Navy uniform. That, I was in the Navy a year later, let's just say. So I know how important it is. It, it, it changed my life to be able to see someone who looks like you doing the things you dream about. And so representation matters. Um, but it, the reason that it is important to me is not that I'm a part of this crew. It's because that concept matters. And so to be a part of it uh, is really special. But the fact that our astronaut office made it easy. If you take any four people out of the office, the crew would look something like this, right? You don't have to work too hard because our astronaut office is representative of our nation. What is the most annoying or least fun <laughs> part of being up in that capsule? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, I haven't flown in the Artemis capsule. I flew in, in Dragon. But uh, being in a capsule, I think it's just the, you know, sometimes you, you get to stare at this beautiful planet in space. It's amazing to be above the atmosphere. But there was a time when I was just sitting in the cupola watching the Earth pass by underneath at 17,500 miles an hour. And so I flew from the east coast of Canada to France. And I looked down at the Bay of Biscay, and it was beautiful. But I thought, man, I would love to walk on that coastline, have my toes in the sand and the surf. And so sometimes you just want to be out there and feel some wind and, you know, that environment kind of always being 72 degrees and dry, low humidity. You know, it gets, it gets a little boring. It's also not for the claustrophobic. I went into the Definitely. Orion capsule over here and I'm claustrophobic. I can imagine. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's not going to be very big. It won't be like the space station, which is like the size of a house. This is going to be like a really nice camping tent, but it'll be like a tent for 10 days. Yeah. Um, I've heard other astronauts describe looking down at Earth and gaining a whole new perspective about our existence even yes. and in relation to the vastness out there. Yeah. Do you have the same experience? Oh, that, you know, that term, the overview effect, is, is so important. I, I think it connects to this view that you get from this level, though, sea level. Starting and living your life at this level makes that view just so profound when you see the Earth as it really is, with no borders, no labels, no legends, nothing telling you how far that is. You just have to figure it out. And, and, and so the idea, I mean, I had seen hundreds of pictures and videos of the Earth from space, but seeing it with your own eyes is, is amazing. And I've seen pictures of Earth from beyond the moon, and it's amazing. The picture Bill Anders took in December 1968. I carry it with me on my phone, okay? And, uh, but to see that perspective, even a perspective just similar to that with my own eyes, I, I look forward to what that's going to feel like and, and, and hugging those other three while it's happening because, like you said, it's about perspective and a perspective that can help to move humanity in the right direction. I don't know how much more time we have. But that good, anything? First to pilot Artemis and Orion into space. <laughs> yeah. 
You're like a Top Gun pilot? Wow. I mean, I, you know, I went to test pilot school, you know, and so I, I flew test missions. And so testing, you know, flying the first flight of some things in the Navy and in, in F-18s and the EA-18, that has always been a part of my aerospace career. And so to, to be able to, to help develop the Dragon, the Crew Dragon spacecraft, and now the Orion is just, I, it's a professional accomplishment that I feel like I don't deserve, but again, I'm going to put my best foot forward to, to make sure that it's ready for the next crew. Your Artemis II, would, did you qualify or be selected for the moon landing mission too, or not necessarily? I, I, th I think there are not enough missions for us to go and repeat, so uh, we're going to do our best to get that crew set up for success, and then we're going to cheer them on and, and, uh, and, and, and maybe help them from the ground. But, I assume that would be something you would love to do, is uh, set foot on the moon. Oh, absolutely. I think any of us who do this as a profession would love to, but, you know, I would also love to do this. I mean, any part of this mission, being the Capcom who says, you go for translunar injection, you go for TLI, that would be cool, just to make that call from mission control. So any role in this, to me, is, is, is pivotal. One more question. As the pilot, how would you tell a layman what your job is? The commander uh, runs the entire mission. The pilot is in charge of the spacecraft and systems. And so my job is to know this system backwards and forwards. And, and if I have to make inputs, you fly the spacecraft. We will fly the spacecraft at some point. Um, so yeah, you're going to pilot the spaceship. Cool. Excellent. <laughs>